Generally, the fine bore tubes are used for feeding and the large bore tubes for drainage of gastric contents. Lubricating jelly. A flashlight or torch. Water. If the patient is conscious and allowed oral intake, sipping water can help with insertion of the tube. An emesis basin. This is necessary as the patient may vomit during insertion of the tube. Medium-sized steri strips. These are used to secure the tube to the nose. Blue litmus strips to assess the pH of the nasogastric aspirate. A catheter tip or Tumi syringe. A drainage bag. A linen protector. And a disposable bag for waste. Each tube is measured against the person to determine the approximate length to be inserted by measuring the tube from the tip of the person's nose to their ear lobe and from there to the xiphoid process of the sternum. The tube is marked or a pre-existing colored band is noted. The tube tip is lubricated and then passed into a clear nostril. A pen light is used to inspect the back of the throat to ensure that the tube is passing into the esophagus rather than coiling up in the mouth. about any previous nasal surgery or trauma or difficulty in breathing through a particular nostril. If the patient is able to, ask them to blow their nose. Examine each nasal passage in turn and check for abnormalities. If any are present, use the opposite side. Using the tube as a measuring device, measure from the nose to the ear and then down to the xiphoid process. The length to be inserted can then be read off the markings on the tube. Drape a linen protector over the patient's clothing. During insertion, the tube has to point downwards and towards the patient's ear. Once it has reached the nasopharynx, Twist it to 180 degrees. This minimizes the risk of the tube coiling at the back of the mouth. Lubricate the proximal end of the tube with lubrication jelly. Insert the tube gently into the chosen nasal passage, even though there may have been no obvious abnormality noticed during inspection, a non-visible obstruction may prevent the tube from progressing further. In this case, Remove the tube and try the opposite nostril. Gently insert the tube until you reach the nasopharynx. You will feel a slight resistance at this point. Twist the tube 180 degrees. If not contraindicated, ask the patient to sip some water and to swallow slowly. Continue to insert the tube until the predetermined length has been reached. Confirm the position of the tube by aspirating on it with the Tumi syringe and checking the pH of the contents. The content should turn the blue litmus strip red. An alternative method of confirming the position by listening over the epigastrium for a bubbling or gurgling sound while insufflating air through the tube is falling out of favor as it is not very reliable. If there are any doubts regarding the position of the tube, confirm it with a chest x-ray. Use the steri strips to attach the tube to the nose by applying one end to the nose 
and wrapping the other end around the tube. Ensure that the tube is not applying excessive pressure against the nostril as this can lead to necrosis. Attach the bag to the tube and allow for free drainage. Document the procedure, its indication, size of tube used and the amount and nature of the aspirate in the patient's records.